Wright, San Francisco, Camp KDE, 2011, Wade Olson, Jeff Mitchell. Uh, Jeff has uh, twofold purposes here. First off, he helped with the uh, organization of the event. Second off, he was a moderator, and actually I'm doubling back. Third off, he was actually a speaker as well. So let's talk about each part of it. Uh, what exactly did you do to prepare for an event uh, like this in magnitude? I think there's thousands of people. Yeah, uh, so, so one of the challenges that you have with thousands of people at an event such as this is that you always have to worry about uh, the people that are the outliers. Uh, so there's always some, you know, infirm, some sickly, um, usually there's some infants as, as well kind of crawling around on the floor. And you really have to try to accommodate uh, every single aspect of society that is represented here. And uh, that's, that's a challenge. And there was a police presence as well. There, there was. Um, we had uh, several cops on segways. We had a couple riding through the, the, walls, uh, the, the halls of the hotel on horses. Uh, that being said, I think you were successful in security because there were zero arrests as far as I was concerned. You got to right. consider that a success. Uh, zero arrests. There were some detainments, but they were like a... They were like a, There was not enough evidence. Uh, we were not filming that at all. Um, but in all seriousness, tell, talk about just the general things that you did to prepare. Like, what was your portion of the responsibilities? Uh, so, um, so it was, it was actually shared pretty equally by a bunch of people. So, uh, the main organizers were uh, probably myself and Celeste and Paul. And um, we had uh, Wade also helping out, uh, Leo Frankie, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, Claudia Rauch, of course, was was like a huge presence. Um, uh, we also had uh, Eugene Trunov uh, did most of our initial website design. Uh, so what I did, I helped coordinate with uh, Angela Brown and the, the Linux Foundation. They've been uh, fantastic hosts. They've really been accommodating. They got us the space. They got us AV. Uh, they got us. Uh, they've been really just helping out with whatever we needed. So we can't thank them enough. They definitely took a lot of the burden of the responsibilities, yeah. the facilities, and the logistics off. We had the time, we had the place, we had the location, we had the access, the equipment, etc. It yep. made and, things and, a lot easier. Yeah, in the past couple of years, that's actually been by far the most stressful part, is figuring out exactly how everything's going to fit together, especially when you don't, you, you haven't been able to get onto a site ahead of time. And so right. uh, having the Linux Foundation do that was great. Right. So your your speech, moving on to your speech, what was the topic? So I talked about putting together a world-class Git infrastructure on, on a less than shoestring budget. Right, because shoestrings still cost money and your final number was zero dollars. That's right. Uh, shoestrings cost 25 cents. Um, you know, there's manpower that goes into making that, but if you discount the manpower aspect, then you do have materials, and we have no materials. With, with just bits, and those are, are infinitesimally cheap. Right, so uh, the good news is it was fairly flattering. People uh, in the event uh, gave a lot of feedback that said they uh, appreciate the communication, the process, and the results of the, the, the Git infrastructure in particular. I know you talked about sysadmin, but I mean, the big change this year was moving to Git, and right. everybody loved it. Right. So yeah, so the talk focused on, on basically the Git aspects of the sysadmin work that we've done the past uh, year. And um, it, I think that we have a great team that, that's worked on it. Now, people talked about the success of the migration to Git, but what kind of feedback have you been uh, been getting about people using Git, like how it, it enhances the way they work with their teams. Uh, so, you know, it's actually, I, I was trying to prepare some metrics to uh, to show this morning, but I, I ran into some problems fetching them. But uh, the metrics that I was able to get basically show that the commit rate, which is in itself not a great measure of, uh, of you know, productivity or anything like that, but the commit rate is, has been pretty constant between subversion and Git. So, um, you know, people seem to at least be, be able to uh, work you know, work the way that they have been, and, and, and at least successful kind of keep on, keep, keep being on, keeping on. Um, for the projects that started out on Git, where you know you have probably more of the, the people that were early adopters that were more focused, um, uh, then you see a much higher frequency of commits, and you see that uh, people are taking more advantage of branches and things like that. So, I, I do think that as people get more acclimated to Git, they're going to find that they're using more of the uh, uh, distrib the distributed version control features and the the excellent merging support that it has. Right. And then finally, uh, you didn't give a talk during the day, but in the evening at Noisebridge, you and Leo spoke about Tomahawk. So Tomahawk. tell us a little more about that. Uh, so Tomahawk uh, was started by, um, by RJ. Uh, actually, I, I shouldn't say that because uh, he wants to name out of it. It was not actually started by RJ. It had not nothing to do with it. And nothing to do with it. No, but it's, it's actually not a truth. So uh, what I meant to say is that uh, the Playdar uh, initiative, which, which started a couple years ago, the idea is to, uh, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> Pausing for four, three, two, one. And we're back. And we're back. Excellent. Uh, that was a, I had a couple uh, cups of coffee, 
feel nice and, and awake. Oh, uh, what day is it? Yeah. So, uh, um, <clears throat> where was I? So, uh, Playdar, a couple years ago, uh, it was this thing that was announced that uh, tries to be a resolver for music, so similar to music DNS. Um, so the idea is that you say what you want to play, and it goes and, and finds it for you. Uh, so Tomahawk is an application that was started by um, Christian Muehlhauser, who is uh, one of the, th the original three M's of Amarok. Um, and uh, it, it basically is centered around the Playdar protocol, and it, its goal is to uh, be simple, but basically to connect you with uh, not only your own machines, but and keeping it legal, of course, uh, connecting yourself to others in your social graphs that you can uh, basically stream music from each other and uh, put together playlists from places like your music, your friend's music, um, Spotify, Rhapsody, Napster, and, uh, and allow you to uh, uh, take advantage of a lot of the metadata that's out there from things like the Echo Nest and Last Night FM. Yeah, I like the fact that you're differentiating from Amarok by saying, you know, Amarok may be your playlist. This is really focused on discovering new music, discovering new music online. What does it take from your listening tastes to connect to all these uh, online services? Right. So the, the Echonest is a fantastic service for finding that kind of data out. They, have, they just have unimaginable amounts of data about every song out there. And so you really can go to them and say, I want, you know, something that is 60% similar to Michael Jackson and 60% similar to Kesha. And I wanted to have a danceability of, you know, this much and a hotness factor of this much, and you know, put together your dance party. That might get zero results back. It, it, it probably will. Right. Exactly. So, all right. Well, on to the next interview for us, right? Yep. High fives. Thanks, guys. Thanks.